Uh, yeah, those are great, aren't they? <laughs> and I love the tagline at the end of that, don't judge too quickly, we won't. Did you hear the story a couple of weeks ago? This isn't in my manuscript, but it, every time I watch these, I think about it. Did you hear the story of the guy a couple of weeks ago that walked into the bathroom at Home Depot and said he was about to drop a bomb, and then they called the bomb squad on him, right? <laughs> You can't judge a book by its cover, can you? Uh, the problem is that oftentimes, that's not the mentality that we have. What happens is we tend to judge too quickly and it becomes this game that we play with other people. And Jesus, he, he talks about this in one of his most famous messages that, that we've been digging into over the last several weeks in this series we've been in called Drop the Mic. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And there are these moments over a period of a few days where Jesus, he was addressing the crowd and he was calling them out for these different things that, that they needed to fix in their lives. And there were moments where Jesus said some things to the crowd that were totally unexpected. Like there were moments where Jesus said some things that, that maybe caused the crowd to go, did Jesus, did he really just say that? Or, or did, did Jesus really just mean what he, he, he just said? And so we've been digging into these words of Jesus that, that I think, what do they mean for us and then how do we apply them to our lives? And Jesus' words, really, he was honing in on something that we all need to understand. He was honing in on the heart issues that we tend to have in our lives. And today we wanna, I wanna zero in on another heart issue that Jesus talked about that we need to get fixed. If you have a Bible or a Bible app on your smartphone, you can go ahead and turn with me to Matthew chapter seven. We're gonna be in Matthew seven today and it's here in Matthew chapter seven that Jesus, he zeroes in on this heart issue when it comes to our judgment of others and how we tend to, to point out and we pick out all the things that are wrong with them without really taking a good look at our own lives. And it's in our judgment to others, what Jesus says is we tend to do is we begin to dissect or we begin to operate on that other person when we really don't have a right to. Now, when I was a kid, I loved the game Operation. Anybody remember that game? Like, it's kind of changed through the years. It's a little bit different. We, we're showing you the old school cover, like the one that I grew up with. This game was kind of a quirky game. You know, you have this guy lying on the operating table and he's got all these different odd things inside of him. And your job as the, the player is to be kind of like the surgeon and you're to remove these items out of this guy's body. Now, the difficulty is that if you hit the side cavities, there were these little metal things on there, and you, you hit those, then his body would shake, his nose would light up, and it would make it harder to do. And you know, if you just look at this guy lying on the operating table, you could tell that there is a lot wrong with him. But you know, just like in the game, how you get to be the surgeon who gets to operate and remove all these things that are in his body, like a bread basket or butterflies in his stomach, I think a lot of times we tend to do the same thing with other people when we judge them. We, we begin to operate on them maybe when we don't have the right to. And what happens is that it's in our operation of others that we begin to diagnose and we begin to dissect the other person's problems, never really looking at maybe the problems that we have in our own life. And Jesus sets out to address this in the text that we're gonna look at today to help us understand that before we go operating on someone else, we might need to do a little operating in our own lives first. Now, if you're following along in your Bible, listen to what Jesus says here, starting in verse one, Matthew chapter seven. It says, do not judge others and you will not be judged for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to a friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye and then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. And now, now we, before we dig into this text a, a little bit more today, I want, I want you to understand uh, what Jesus is saying here, and, and I think to, to, to set this up, you have to understand that this, this verse here in verse one is oftentimes one of the most misquoted and misunderstood verses in all of scripture. In fact, many people have, have used this one verse that Jesus says here to, to, to say that there should not be any moral judgment, that we should not pass moral judgment, that people will come to us and they'll say, do you hear what Jesus says? He said, don't judge or you'll be ju judged in return. And what I want us to understand today is this, that not all judgment is bad. 
But we have to first understand whether or not our, uh, we're doing it with the right attitude and the right spirit about us. And it's also important to understand what Jesus talks about when he, when he talks about judgment here. I think you could kind of sum up this message of what Jesus wants us to understand to this big idea. Don't be a hater. Don't always point the finger at everybody else. And the kind of G, uh, judgment that Jesus is talking about here is this judgment that we tend to have on others based upon personal opinion. It's when we condemn others based upon our own opinions. Now that isn't to say that, that we shouldn't make good decisions or we shouldn't have discernment in the choices that we make or the people that even we should associate with. But instead, what Jesus is warning against is this critical nature or this attitude that we can oftentimes have towards others that we need to get a hold of and we need to be aware of. And again, what we have to understand is it all comes back to the heart. And so Jesus sets out to, to help us understand here that before we go performing an operation on anybody else, we need to look inward at our own lives and see, is there anything that might cause us not to be able to, to be able to give that advice to somebody else. And look, I'll be honest with you. I'll be the first to admit this morning that there have been times in my life where I have passed judgment on somebody else unfairly. That I, I've looked at another person or I've made a rash decision about someone before I had all the facts. And I think this is something that we all deal with, and that's what Jesus sets out to help us understand, is that before we set out to cast judgment on others, we must first examine ourselves. Because it's really easy to point the finger at everybody else and should say what is going on in their life when we really haven't done an inward depth to see what's going on in our own lives first. And that's what Jesus says here in these words that we're looking at today. In fact, I want to go back to verses 1 and 2. I want to look at the message translation and notice how it's uh, translated here, what Jesus says. It says, don't pick on people, jump on their failures, criticize their faults, unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. You, you know, I love this imagery of a boomerang. I think it's really fitting as we think about uh, and we talk about judgment and passing judgment on others. Now, if you've ever seen somebody throw a boomerang that's a professional, you know that they, they can throw it out there and with the flick of a wrist, that boomerang, just because they know how to throw it correctly, it will return to them. Now, let's be honest, if you or I try to pick up a boomerang and we just watch what somebody did and we try to throw it out there, my guess is that most of us, that boomerang's not coming back to us. And what, what we tend to do, Jesus says, is we throw out, we cast our judgment to other people and we don't expect it to come back to us. Like we, we just think that we can throw it out there and there's not going to be any effects or, or any repercussions from, from it. But Jesus says that when we're criti critical towards others, you better expect it to come back to you just like a boomerang does. Essentially, what Jesus is saying is that in this boomerang effect, our judgment towards others comes back to affect us in a negative way. And Jesus helps us to understand what those effects are in the next couple of verses. Pick back up here in verses three to five. Notice what Jesus says. He says, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye, then you'll see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. And here Jesus kind of lays out to the crowd and especially the Pharisees that he knew were listening on that day. Now, we've been talking about that Jesus was addressing not only those in the crowd who were his followers or those who, who were just kind of on the fence, but he was talking to the religious leaders, the Pharisees. And as we've been talking over the last six weeks, we said the Pharisees, they, they had a problem, right? They were so focused on the rules and regulations of religion that they had failed to understand that it was more than that with Jesus, that Jesus desired this relationship. And so Jesus here, he's addressing the Pharisees because he knew that these guys were ultimate pros at passing the judgment on other people, never really looking at their own issues first. And so Jesus sets out to address this. And you know, I find it fitting that, that Jesus uses an eye to get his point across. I want you to think about your eye for a minute. 
Your eye is the part of the body that, that allows you to see. Your eye is the thing that gives you perspective. And it's oftentimes what you see out of your eye that causes you maybe to pass judgment on someone else. And what Jesus says here happens is we tend to look at somebody else, and, and I brought this along as an illustration. We, we tend to look at somebody else and we're like, hey, come here, come here, come here. You got a little something, something in your eye right now. And we look and, and we get close and it's a little speck of sawdust. You can barely see that, right? I mean, it's there. I brought a bag so you could kind of get a bigger picture of what that sawdust might look like. But we look at that person, we see the sawdust in their eye and we say, you got a problem. I want to help you fix it. But Jesus says, the problem is that while we're trying to fix the problem, we're trying to remove the sawdust from their eye. We got this big old stinking two by four sticking out of our own eye. And Jesus says, we're walking around like this and we're swinging that two by four. And people are having to duck out of the way and we're knocking things over. And this is really dangerous right here. And, and you know, this is kind of an over the top example that Jesus gives here. But he wanted all of us to understand that before we go telling everybody else the problems they have, we might need to take a good look in the mirror. Jesus wanted us to understand that, that before we go pointing out the faults and the failures of everyone else, we might need to look in the mirror to see what's wrong in our own eye first. You know, oftentimes the problem is this, though. We can't see what's wrong with us because we can't see our reflection. You know, have you ever gone to a restaurant and uh, you maybe eat a salad and you get a piece of lettuce stuck in your teeth and, and the people that are sitting with you, they're not really your friends because they never tell you. And you're walking around and you get home and you still have that piece of lettuce in there and you're like, why didn't they tell me, right? The reason that we didn't know it was there is we couldn't see it. We couldn't see our reflection. And it's important to understand that we need to look in the mirror first at our own stuff. We need to take a step back and, and, and do a little bit of looking at our own lives first before we go pointing out somebody else's stuff. And you know, we're all critical of others, aren't we? You think about this, you, you wanna know who's most critical of teachers? Other teachers. You wanna know who's critical of parents? Other parents. Leaders, other leaders. Uh, politicians, other politicians, and probably everybody, right? Um, athletes, other athletes. Pastors, everybody in the church, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Other pastors are really critical. Like, like I, there are times where I'll be listening to a message during the week uh, and I'll be listening to somebody and I'll be like, man, that was really good. But they could have done it a whole lot better. I mean, I would have done this joke differently and you could have elaborated on it and it would have been a whole lot funnier, right? And there are times where, where I am critical of other pastors and look, I, sometimes I stand up here and I say some pretty stupid stuff and I need to take a good look in the mirror, but don't we all do that? Don't we all tend to point the finger at somebody else before looking at our own stuff first? And what Jesus says is before we go looking and pointing at someone else, we might need to remove the big old plank that's sticking out of our own eye first. Before we can do a little operation on anybody else, we might need to do a little operating of our own. And that's why Jesus says what he does in verse four. He says, how can you think of saying to your friend, I, let me help you get that speck out of your eye. I don't want your eye to get damaged. I don't want you to go blind. How can we, how can we say that to a friend? He says, when you are standing there and this plank is sticking out of your eye. And what Jesus is saying here is it's more than just seeing and looking at it. He says, you need to do a little operation." And this is the problem that Jesus wanted the Pharisees to see. Yes, pun intended there, all right? It's what he wants us to understand. We can't go around judging other people for all the things they're doing wrong when we've got our own issues first. And the problem is this. Oftentimes, I don't think we think there's anything wrong with us. We think we're okay, that we don't have any issues, that, that our stuff, it's all good, when it's so far from the truth, because the truth is oftentimes the thing that we want to point out in the life of someone else that is wrong tends to be the thing that we're running away from in our own lives. And it's a whole lot easier to look at everybody else and say, they've got this wrong, they need to change this, they need to correct this in their life, and never really look at the plank that's in our own eye. 
And Jesus says that when we do that, when that's our perspective, that that's how, that's how we say things, that's what we do, he says this in verse five. He says, hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye and then you'll see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. This is literally where Jesus just dropped the mic on the crowd. He, he calls the Pharisees out, he calls us out. And the word that he uses here is hypocrite. He says, when, when we go pointing the finger at somebody else and we haven't fixed things in our own life first, he says, you're a hypocrite. And what Jesus is saying there is you gotta stop it. You gotta stop judging other people before you got your stuff figured out first. Now this word hypocrite, it actually comes from the drama world. It, it was used to describe someone who was acting or pretending. And what Jesus is saying here is stop acting and pretending like you don't have your own issues as well. And look, as a pastor, I, I could be guilty of this. I could easily be a hypocrite if I, if I don't watch things in my own life because I stand up here every single week and I, I share messages with you and I say, this is what the Bible says, this is what you should do, this is how you should live your life, you should invite your friends to church, you, you should tell other people about Jesus, but if I'm not doing that in my own life, if I'm not making, taking those steps in my own life, I could easily be a hypocrite. And so I want you to know, I'm constantly looking in the mirror. I'm constantly, as we've been going through this Sermon on the Mount series, these messages have been speaking to me as much as I think they've probably been speaking to anybody else. Because these are things that I've got to make sure that I'm evaluating, that I'm, I'm not saying one thing and doing something completely different. Because oftentimes when we judge someone else, and we don't take a good look in the mirror, when, when we don't do a little bit of surgery to remove these two by fours, they're sticking out of our eye. What Jesus says happens is this. He says we lose our ability to influence others. When we continually talk about others, when we point out all their faults and all their, their failures and their mistakes, and we don't do a good inventory of the things that are going on in our life, Jesus says we lose the opportunity to make a difference in somebody else's life. And so what Jesus is saying here is this, you've got to remove the plank first so that you could be a difference maker next. Because it's not until we remove the plank can we really do the work that God has called us to do to be that difference maker that he wants us to be. And you see, when we remove the plank in our own eye first, what happens is it changes our perspective and it changes our heart as well. But like, like this, is, this is what we'll say when we encounter somebody else who's going through a difficult time. It, it totally changes us. We'll be like, you know what? I know what you're going through. Like, I understand the struggles and the pain and the hurt you're experiencing right now. Like, I was there. My life was, was in ruins. I was going down the wrong path. I was making mistakes. I almost lost my job. I almost lost my family. I almost lost my life. But because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, because of God's forgiveness, I was able to remove the plank out of my own eye. And God loved me enough to send his son Jesus so that I could be redeemed, so I could be restored. And I want to tell you about that too, that you don't have to lose everything either. It's not too late for you. Can I tell you how much Jesus loves you? That's what it would sound like. And that's a different posture than maybe what you've even heard growing up. Hey, sinner, you better get rid of the sin in your life because if not, you're going to hell. Have you, ever, have you ever heard the people standing on the street corner who are yelling at you? They're telling you, if you don't change your life, you're going to hell. It's all over for you. I mean, that, that's maybe the posture that you grew up in a church that was like, maybe that's the experience you've had with others who call themselves Christians who, who acted all holier than now. But that's not who God calls us to be. That's not what he wants the church to be about. God wants us to make a difference in the lives of other people. And he wants us to do that by telling them about the grace that is extended to them. But we can't do that if we don't show that same grace that he's shown to us. And so if Jesus were here today, I think Jesus would say this. He would say, stop it. Stop judging others without first taking a good look at yourself. And look, I know there might be some of you here today who, who've been hurt by the church in your past. Like, like maybe the church you grew up in, it, it was not a place where you felt love or acceptance. 
That the people were always pointing a finger at you because maybe you, you acted a little bit different or you dressed different or you, or you maybe came in and you had some baggage that you brought in and they were like, oh, you gotta keep the baggage at the door. Or maybe someone who called themselves a Christian didn't act anything like Jesus calls us to act or maybe even some pastor said some things but on Sunday but acted a different way during the week and you've been burned by the church. Can, can I just say to you today, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the hurt that you've experienced. I'm sh- sorry that they didn't show you love. And I want you to know this, that God loves you and God cares about you and he desires a relationship with each and every one of us. And the thing is, unlike maybe those who have tried to point out everything that is wrong in your life before fixing the things in your own life, in their own lives, God doesn't see you that way. Understand God wants something for you. What he wants for you is to have this relationship with him. It's why he sent Jesus to this earth, because Jesus loved us so much that he gave us the opportunity to be restored in this relationship that was broken because of sin. You know, in the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, Revelation 22, 17, God gives this invitation to each and every one of us. I want you to listen to what it says. It says, the spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. Do you understand what God is saying here? He says, I want you to come. And you can come as you are. He doesn't say, you got to get this fixed, you got to change this. No, he says, you can come as you are. You don't have to fix anything. You don't have to change that. You don't have to do anything. Just come. And you can drink from this cup that is life. You can have life. You can be restored in this relationship with me. It's what Jesus showed us as he walked along the earth, you know, in the gospel accounts of Jesus' life in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Every time I love If you go back and you just read through the Gospels and you look at the times where Jesus healed someone, what I love is that every time Jesus healed someone, he healed them before he asked them to do anything. He healed them and then he would say words like this, now go and leave your life of sin. Now go and sin no more. Now go and tell others about who I am. He didn't make them do anything except he said, come and come as you are because I want to heal you. And Jesus' response is the response that we need to have as his followers as well. You see, I believe the church, I believe we as the followers of Christ here at Compass North Fort Worth and across all of our campuses, I believe that the church should be a hospital for the broken because we're all broken people. That the church should be a place where we are helping others rather than bringing each other down. And it happens when we're willing to do a little bit of surgery to find out where our hearts are at. That's what Jesus is saying here in this message. Before we go pointing out everything that's wrong with everybody else, he says, you just got to do a little look in your own eye to see is there anything there that might be causing me not to be the best example for who God is. So how do we do that? How do we live that out? How do we make sure that we aren't passing judgment on others before getting ourselves right first? Let me give you four quick things as we close out today. The first thing I would say is this, you gotta focus on yourself. Now now you don't hear that very often in church. It's not always, it's all about me kind of messages. We're usually saying, you know, I go out, tell other people, share the gospel with others. But, but I say that in respect to this idea of the plank and the speck, because what Jesus is leaning into you here to do is this. He, he says, you, you got to deal with your own fears. You got to deal with your own insecurities. You got to deal with your own loneliness. You got to deal with your own faults, your own bitterness, your own pain, your own loss, your own, your own moments of weakness, whatever it is for you. He says, you got to, you got to take care of that stuff first so that you can love others well. Because if not, here's the deal, that stuff spills out of you. And it doesn't spill out of you in a good way, but in a hurtful, damaging, and judging way. The second thing I would say is this, you've got to take your, your thoughts captive. 
Like, like don't get stuck on the runaway train of judgment. I think we need to ask ourselves this question, is what I'm about to say honoring to God? Is what I, I'm about to say, is it gonna be helpful? Am I trying to build that person up? Am I trying to encourage that person? And if not, then you need to punt that thought and you need to start over. The third thing I would say is this, remember how it feels. Remember those times when somebody said something so totally maybe out of line or uncalled for, maybe they caught you in a bad moment and they didn't look at all the other good things that were happening in your life, what that felt like. Like like how that felt like a, a sucker punch to your soul or your heart. Remember how that felt for you and then use it as a motivator not to do the same thing to somebody else. And then finally, I would say this, we need to look for the good and the best in others. You know, we live in a culture that se- seems to point out everything that's wrong with everybody else. We, we, need, we tend to fixate on the negative rather than the good stuff. With our peers, with other people, We often look for their wrongs or their failures or their shortcomings rather than strive to love them for who they are or who they could become. And I'm glad that God loves me for who I could become, not who I am. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that the people didn't give up on me when I had my own shortcomings. You know, some of you have heard this story before, but there was a time in my life where I left the ministry and I was kind of running on the opposite direction away from God because I didn't think that I was on the right path. And I thought I got it wrong, what God was calling me to. And I made some, some mistakes and I made some, some, I did some things that I, I wish that I could take back, but I can't. But I'm thankful that in those moments of who I was in those moments, that, that people still saw me for who I could become. And that's why I get to stand here today. That's why I get to to be the pastor of Compass North Fort Worth. And I get to share these messages because people believed in who I could become, not who I was. And that changed everything. And that's how we need to look towards others. You know, I heard, heard someone say this recently, talking about negativity and gossip and criticism that we're prone to. And here's the line. It said, I want to spread like a virus, the plague, everything that is good about you. I want to absorb, swallow, shut down everything that is bad about you because I want to be the end of the road for the negative things about you and the beginning of a movement for all that is good. I love that. What if we as the church started to be a beginning of a movement for all that was good for others? And we started to build them up rather than to bring them down. That we, we stop the negative so that they could see the positive in their own lives and how that would change them. It doesn't mean that we ignore sin or, or we avoid correction where necessary, or even we have those moments where we have to, to maybe say some things that are hard for another person to hear. It just means that we love them like Christ did and we believe in each other and what they could become. And we might challenge them or we might encourage them or inspire them, we fight for them. We care for them and we move toward one another so they could be better together. And here's my prayer for Compass North Fort Worth. My prayer from the beginning, before we ever opened or we ever launched, was that this would be a place where people would feel love and acceptance. That they never feel outcast or unwanted here. That this would be a place where people could come in with whatever mess, whatever baggage they have and know that it's okay. And that this would be a place where, where people would know that Jesus is for all people. Not just some people, that Jesus is for everyone. And that we would, we would allow people to experience that on a weekly basis. So this week, here, here's the challenge that I wanna give you. I want you to take a good look at your own life this week and ask yourself this question. Is there any area in my life right now that I need to do some operating on? And whatever area that might be for you, take, take this week to focus on that because Jesus calls us to take a good look at our own lives first before we go passing the judgment and pointing out the issues of someone else. 
You know, next week we're wrapping up this series, Drop the Mic, and we're, we're going to cover, I, I think, probably what Jesus wanted more than anything for us to understand, the most important part. He, he lands the plane with this, and we're going to land uh, with this powerful message that Jesus talks about. It kind of culminates everything we've been talking about. And I, I'm so excited because it is Decision Weekend as well. And so I'm praying for you. I'm praying that if you have not made that decision to accept Christ and be baptized, that maybe next week would be the week that you take that step. And so before you leave here today, if you're considering that, come talk to somebody. Talk to somebody about the most important decision that you'll ever make. And then next week, I want to encourage you to invite someone to come with you come back. Uh, It's going to be an awesome morning, and uh, we are so excited about what God's already got in store. We have some who have already said yes. I want to get baptized next week, and so it's going to be a great day as we celebrate those lives being changed, just like we saw a little bit earlier with Jeff's life. Would you pray with me? Father, we, we thank you for the reminder that you give to us to make sure that we take a good look at our own lives first, that we, we do a little perspective of ourselves first before we, we point out the things in others' lives. And God, I thank you that, that you didn't look at all of our shortfalls and shortcomings and, and the issues that we've had and just give up on us, but you continue to pursue us, you continue to love us. So Father, I pray this week that as we we go about our weeks in, in our different places that we'll be. God, help us to do a little bit of reflection and see, is there things in, in my life that I need to change, things that I need to work on, things that I need to tweak? And God, because of that, because we do a little bit of operating on ourselves first, we'd be able to make a bigger difference in our community. God, we thank you for your love and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Man, we're so glad that you're here. If you're a guest of ours, we'd love to meet you. We'd love to connect with you. Also just want to tell you, uh, we're one month away from being a year old. So that means on, yeah, that's something to celebrate. That means on March 24th, we're having a big anniversary celebration. So we want you to invite your friends to that. We're going to have barbecue afterwards. We're going to have uh, just a time of community. It's going to be a blast. So be prepared for that. Invite someone you know to be a part of this. And uh, hey, you can join the movement today by serving, by helping us tear down. That's always a great way to get connected here. We love you guys, and we'll see you next Sunday.